plus. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna get right into it because we are a little late now. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you about my part-time power hour. And I think what's really important about this is that these are things that you have to do every single day, okay? So when I go on vacation for my nine to five, I tell my team, I tell my boss, I tell my customers, you need to do the same thing with your beach body business. You need to tell your team, you need to tell your customers, you need to tell them, hey, I'm taking a break. Going on vacation is 1,000% allowed, but don't just not show up, because people are gonna be like, where is he, where is she, what's going on? So really, really, really important. I will tell you that on the cruise a couple years ago, um, I didn't sign up for Wi-Fi that everyone else did, and I chose to shut off my phone, and I told my audience that's what I was doing. So that's okay, you wanna take a week off, you wanna take a day off, whatever you need to do, but make sure you tell people you're doing it. So this is my part-time power hour, um, and I'm gonna go over my weekly action items with you, and then this is what I do every single day. So every single week, I make sure that I have, I set the intentions for the week. I know what I'm gonna do. I wanna help as many people as possible. I send out a newsletter every Friday to all my customers. Fit Tip Friday, I use Streak Mail Merge, it's free. All of this stuff is free, I don't have an assistant. This is all stuff I do on my own. Uh, I try to turn my Fit Tip Friday newsletter into a blog post, repurposing, right? Time management, super important. I try to do one Instagram Live a week, and I try to do one Facebook Live a week. Well, I don't try, that's what I do, sorry. And then um, I, I will say that the, the number one thing for you guys is the no excuses and no complaining. I know that sounds really obvious, but if you look at the top coaches, they're men, they're women, they have kids, they don't have kids, they have jobs, they don't have jobs, they live in different parts of the country. But the one thing that I never see is them making excuses for why they didn't hit a goal or why they weren't successful. It's not, oh, I had to work extra hours at my job, or oh, my kid was up all night. Yes, like you're not gonna hit every single goal you set, but you have to take responsibility as something that happened in your life that maybe prevented it, that's okay, but complaining about it is not gonna set the right mindset for it. So that's super important. So my daily action items. Um, so that's what I do every week, and then this is what I do every day. Um, I work about seven to 10 hours a week on the business. I do at least an hour every day, and then on the weekends I do a couple hours of catch up for my weekly action items. So I add people to my network, three to five people every single day. Um, whatever your platform is, this isn't super platform specific, but you can adapt it to whatever platforms you are using that are working for your business. I return all of my messages. I do um, one to two Facebook posts a day, and for me personally, I feel like I need to breadcrumb the coaching opportunity more. So I need to talk about little tidbits of the coaching opportunity, because I haven't been good at that. So that's a goal for me. I'm literally sharing with you what I write down, guys. That's a goal for me this year. I invite two to three people daily to my next group, and I always have a group starting. So every single week I have something starting, and that doesn't mean I have a challenge group starting every week, but um, an informational coaching group or a free group, and I'll go over my calendar with you on the next slide so you can see that. I don't know if you guys felt this way, but when I started the business, I had squirrel syndrome. Like there was always a group starting and I didn't know what to invite to, but by having a calendar and knowing what I'm gonna to invite to, my team will tell you, I have OCD type A. Our team calendar is planned out through June. And I tell people you can use that or you can take your own and adapt from my calendar, whatever works for you. But I need to have it written out so I know what's starting every single week. I follow up, okay? I have a list of people I'm gonna follow up with and I make sure that I follow up with them. Um, some of the programs will do that for you. You can like schedule emails to go out. That's something that Streak does as well. Like I said, free platform, add on to your Google account. Um, I start to form with people that interact with me. So I start to form relationships with I see people liking, commenting, um, interacting with my stories, anything like that. I post on my team page. Something. A lot of times I share posts that are doing really well for me or posts I see in my newsfeed that I'm like, oh, that was a great post, I shared this. And I'm like, guys, make this your own. Like, see how well this is doing? Like, kind of make it yours and, and do something with it. I try to share things that they can do. 
Um, I do ten Instagram, or I do ten Instagram Facebook stories every single day. Um, so lots of interactive content. I try to post every hour or two. Um, that's just better for the algorithm instead of like posting everything at once. And um, this is what I focus on every single day. Every single day I do these things, no excuses. I read and I listen to personal development. Sometimes it's when I'm out walking my dog. Um, sometimes it's when I'm cooking dinner. I don't always have time to sit down and read, but I do have time to make it a priority in some way in my life. And I work on me. I lead by example. That's where I spend a lot of my time. Um, so I drink Shakeology, I use a performance line, um, I work on my business every single day. That's the best way that you're gonna get your team to reciprocate is by showing them that you're doing it too, right? Do what you see, do what you do, do what I do. Oh, anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so this is an example of a calendar. I don't make these pretty calendars anymore. This became um, kind of extra for me and it was just really, really bad at graphics, you guys. I'm in technology, I do math, so um, I don't do these anymore. I, I write them in like a Google Doc, but this is a good visual for you guys. So we had a fun Beat Me and Success Club Points contest, Power Hour Every Day. This happened to be a Team Cup month. It was a February. So you'll see like every single Monday, there's something starting, right? So uh, we're going, we're having our free group um, the first Monday of the month. And then we're having our challenge group start the second Monday of the month. And then we're doing a live what is coaching webinar the third Sunday of the month. And then I'm going to re rinse and repeat. So for me, by having a free group start the first Monday of the month, and I do this every single month, it allows me to kind of funnel in who I want to invite to my challenge group. And then by having a what is coaching webinar start the week after that, it allows me to say, okay, who do I think would make a really good coach from my challenge group and funnel them in that way. So that's what works for me. I'm not saying this is what's gonna work for you, but this is what works for me and kind of like my methodology for the entire year, essentially. And obviously things get jumbled and kind of moved around as programs launches, as programs launch, um, but this is kind of the way things, and this month we body stuck with my calendar because the second Monday of the month is Sean's group tomorrow, so that was very nice of them. <laughs> okay, so I talked a lot about sort of inviting and following up and talking to people, which I think is something that we really struggle with, but um, Kim talks about the new vital behaviors to invite and connect. So, and I can post this um, presentation in our, in our group as well. So, um, compliment, comment, question. I'm sure you guys have heard that before. This is all pieces that I take from other people, guys. I didn't reinvent the wheel. So, that's how you start a conversation. So, I love that blue dress. Where do you get it? Um, you know, it looks great on you, right? Like, something really simple like that. Um, you know, more personal questions. Have you considered? This is gonna sound like a silly comment, but use their name. Um, Hun and Babe, like I think people feel like you know that they're just like sending it to five bazillion people, right? Um, I know on Instagram it's a little bit harder, but I'd say eight times out of 10, you can probably find their name on their profile, even if it's not their like screen name. So these are some examples of questions that you can use as well. So here's um, a social media kind of posting planner. If you're like, I don't even know what to talk about. So if you're using social media for your business, this is some things you can talk about. Find your best times. For me, I know my best times are like Sunday nights through Thursday nights. Um, and I try to do a post either in the morning or around lunchtime, and then my most, the post that I want the most engagement on at night. Um, if I have like a really bomb post, I'll do it on the weekend, and I know that it's gonna get engagement no matter what. So, Motivation Monday, Monday Blues, Man Crush Monday, um, Transformation Tuesday, Tuesday Treat, Women Crush Wednesday, right? Hump Day, Wednesday Wellness, and you can breadcrumb into all of these. So it doesn't always have to be a post directly about coaching or about the challenge groups, but like, or an invitation, but you can like 
you know, sneak a little something in about coaching or about challenge groups into your post. That is super easy to do. Um, Katie Ursa, I think it was, talked about on a national wake-up call, doing a post like, hey, you know, um, so-and-so lost 20 pounds this year, and she can enter the Beachbody Challenge to win, you know, uh, a free t-shirt, and then 500 up to $100,000, do you think she should do it? That, like, it breadcrumbs coaching, it breadcrumbs challenge groups, um, it, it engages people, right? It asks a question and engages people, and it's recognition for that challenger or coach. Like, that is like the, the quad fecta of, <laughs> of posts. Um, that was a really great suggestion. And you know what? I always listen to those calls, and maybe I don't take every single thing that they do in them, but I did that week, did a post, I had a challenger lose 50 pounds in like eight months last year, and I did that post for her, and she was like, oh, I didn't know I could enter this challenge. Like, okay, awesome. So really super important to make sure that you're kind of throwing those little things in, even if it's not a direct call to action. So um, this is something that I'm newer to as well as stories, but this was a really great thing that I read about. Like I was like, what do I post about 10 stories? Like I'm not interesting. I, I'm a corporate girl, you know? Like, yeah, I work out, that's great. How many times people wanna see me like running around trying to avoid my infant? Probably not that many, but this was really <laughs> helpful for me um, and helped me really kind of, people like really add value through stories because that's really the purpose of social media, to add value. Like why would people want to come to you because you're adding value into their lives? Um, the five things, I don't know if you guys have done this, but five things kind of outside of coaching that you talk about in your social media are the things that I mean when I say lifestyle. So whether they're, you know, um, that you like to hike, that you like you, um, you know, you're a toddler mom, you're a twin dad, you, whatever they are, you really like jeans, or you have curly hair, or whatever, like those, that's what I mean when I say like your five things, your lifestyle, part of your lifestyle. And you would not believe the tips and hacks that people love. Like I did one about spaghetti squash, like how you can poke holes in it and cook it whole, and people like ate it up. They were like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. A lot of things we know as, you know, you can do that again. <laughs> don't take your life into your hands and try to cut a spaghetti squash raw. It is like terrifying. <laughs> okay, so here's my tip. Poke holes in it like a potato, put it in the oven for an hour at 450, and then let it, just cut it open, let it cool. Perfect. All right. <laughs> but seriously, things we know as coaches, like drink more water, like veggies are good for you, like cauliflower rice exists. People don't know those things. Seriously. Like we think, oh, this is so silly to share. Everyone knows this. Maybe everyone in your community does, but people don't, okay? So think about that. Okay, and here are my top five time management tips. So have a plan and stick to it. Write it down, seriously. Like super important. I am not um, a visual person. Like I said, I do math, I'm in technology. That is the way my brain works. My background is in engineering. Um, but I sat for the first time this year and I finally did a vision board. Another shout out to Katie Ursta because she was on a call with us um, with corporate and she and she was talking about how you have to have tangible goals and I was like I don't have tangible goals I just love this business and I love this business turned into it saved my life as you guys saw and like I'm really as normal as I could be right and she was like you have to have tangible goals and I'm like but I don't she's like well you better write some down and so this year for the first year for the first time I did a vision board and I encouraged my team to do the same, and I got them the Success Club Prize vision board, which means I didn't have to get that creative because they gave us like fun little magnets and stuff. I printed stuff out and I put it up. So have a plan, stick to it, have a daily plan, have a weekly plan, have a monthly plan, have a yearly plan, have a many year long plan. Do it every day, every single day. I know sometimes it's late, like my kid doesn't want to go to bed, I don't get to bed till later. Um, I don't want to do it either. I had a really long day at work. I have to finish up something for work, maybe late at night too. I still do it. I put the necessary before the fun. So I hate 
hate Instagram direct message. I think they're awkward. I hate going into my inbox. I have like a lot of notifications right now in there and it gives me agita to look at. But I do it first. Because if I don't do it first, it's not gonna happen. So if you love and, and like I, you know, I love like sitting down and messing with numbers and doing the math and going to my back office. That's so fun for me. You guys are probably all cringing. But I'm gonna do that last because I like that stuff. If you love graphics, do that last. Okay, I don't love graphics, so if I had to do that, which I don't, I would do that um, first. Take your hardships and turn them into success. You guys saw that on the video. We sort of planned this out, so I would go after my video so you guys kind of knew my background. I didn't spend a ton of time on that because I wanted to talk to you about business today. But seriously, you all have been through something. Maybe it isn't what I've been through, and that's okay, but I had a very successful coaching business with my everyday hardships before this happened to me. I was a coach about two years, um, and I was, you know, like I said in my video, I was five-star elite coach um, in 2015, and I had my accident in the summer of 2016, right after we got back from Summit, and I continued to have a successful coaching business. No one would have blamed me if, if I was like, you know what, I just need a break for a couple months. But sharing my story was so incredibly therapeutic for me to be able to have an outlet and like, you know, share with everyone what was going on and take those, I was in the hospital for, for four or five weeks when I, between rehab and the ICU. It was so incredibly therapeutic for me, I can't even tell you. So think about that, think about the therapy that it could bring you to just share what's going on with you, and on top of that, how many people you're gonna be able to help by sharing. And then, the last tip is stop scrolling. You guys, like, you're not working your business for an hour if you're just like tootling through social media. If you see something you like, cool, take it, copy it, put it in a note. If you're having a brain fart one day, you can refer back to your notes and be like, oh yeah, I love this post. Let me like, use it as inspiration to write what I want to write about, right? Or, you know, I'm gonna you know, start to message people based on what this post is talking about. So just stop, it, it's not working when you're scrolling, it's, it's just not. Okay, so I'm gonna challenge you also to do something. Don't be inspired by me, seriously. You guys, I have nothing that any of you, you know, like I'm not special. Okay, so don't just sit here and be like, oh, I'm so inspired, like she had this horrible thing happen to her, and don't, just don't. Take action, like make, take this time and decide on your plan and decide what this year is gonna look like for you. We are just starting out. Um, you know, Samantha talked about this, like could be any of you on that top 10 leaderboard, and Bora Bora looks pretty freaking nice. So, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you'll go there because that is what's on your vision board, and that's what you wanna do. What does your calendar look like? What are you gonna be inviting to? We probably are all like doing the last push for the Transform 20 test group, right? This is a great time to be recruiting these next 24 hours to get people in there with you. You need to be in there, and you need to make sure you're inviting people to be in there with you. Um, Sean has put forward some great content in just the prep week, and I expect it to continue to be awesome. Um, after that, what are you going to be inviting to that starts, and then what? Then are you just going to freeze? Do you want to host maybe an informational coaching group for your challengers? Make sure you're inviting your challenge group to that. And then be bold and start reaching out. The worst anyone says is no, um, and that really isn't so bad, right? And no, I, I know you guys have all heard this, no doesn't mean no forever. It means not right now. And that's really hard for me because I'm someone that reached out to my coach. So I'm thinking to myself, like, like, what, like I'm, you know, I want people to come to me because that's what I did, but I know that's not the reality for a lot of people. And something that we really have to remember about this business is that what we do is different. I'm sorry, it just is. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with selling jewelry or candles or makeup. If you want to run a business, that's amazing. But you're not, no one runs a support group to teach you how to use the candle that you just bought from them. It just doesn't happen. It's very easy for me to reach out to someone and say, hey, I love that pumpkin scented candle or that mascara looks awesome. It is very, very hard for someone to reach out to you and say, I'm overweight. 
I'm unhealthy, I need help. So it is our job to reach out to them and say, I would love to help you. I am here when you are ready. So remember that when you are inviting. So that is what I have for you guys today. I think